is the most awesome song in the kingdom book. There is a God, He is alive. Doesn't matter what anyone else says. There is a God and He is alive. You guys fired up today? You ready to get in the Word of God? Turn your Bibles to Acts chapter 4. We're studying out the book of Acts. And for those that have come for the first time, we, we just believe, we, we are a Bible church. We believe in the entire Bible. We are not a New Testament church because the Bible doesn't talk about being a New Testament church. After all, all the scriptures that highlight that Jesus was the Son of God and all those things were talked about from the Old Testament when you would get converted in the New Testament church. Yeah. Even in the book of 2 Timothy where the Bible talks about all Scripture being God-breathed, the word Scripture is talking about the Old Testament right there. Yeah. So, so there is no such thing as a New Testament church. Nope. The Bible says the church is built on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets. Yeah. Where do you find the prophets? You find them in the Old Testament. Yeah. Where do you find the apostles? You find them in the New Testament. So the church is built on the Word of God. Yeah. The entire Bible right there. We are a Bible church. We, we really believe in, in, in central leadership. We, we believe that, that, that Jesus is there, we say, obviously our central leader. But you need to have a man lead you. After all, Jesus came down so that we can go on up. He came down to show himself a man, a personal, physical example of what it meant to be a, a true, true, you know, a man of God. He was, yeah. he was made in the flesh just like us. And we needed that flesh and blood example. Mm-hmm. And we always need a flesh and blood example to help us fall in love with God. Are you with yeah. me here? Yeah. So we, 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 we just believe in central leadership. We believe discipling is a command of God. Yeah. It is not an option. It is a command. It, it is not something that you get to debate about. We all need a bit of accountability right there. Oh, yeah. We need someone in our life teaching us to obey the word of God. Amen? Yeah. We believe the Bible is the word of God. Yeah. We don't add anything to it because we know in Proverbs, the Bible says, when you add to the word, he'll rebuke you and prove you a liar. I tried that. I got a lot of rebukes in my life. (laughs) And so we don't add to the Bible. We just say, hey, the Bible says it. That settles it. One man said, hey, you know, the Bible says it. I believe it. That settles it. Right? I said wrong. Mm -mm. The Bible says it. That settles it whether you believe it or not. (laughs) And so we are a Bible church. I pray that if you're visiting for the first time, you believe in the word of God. Amen? Let's go to our Father in prayer before we dig in. Father, thank you so much for today. You you are a flat, incredible God. You are powerful, you are almighty, and you are unstoppable. Father, you, you, you will not be deterred. Your goals will not be blocked. Whether mankind is arrogant and proud and creating a new image and carving out an image of God that they want to make uh, for themselves. Father, you, you still, your glory will not depart. Father, you, you, you cannot be stopped. We thank you for the first century church, Father, the only church. To show us what it really means to be God's church. Amen. And we pray, Father, that we could be God's church, Father. That we, we, we are unstoppable, Father. And we allow nothing to, to hinder us, to deter us. We thank you for today, Father, for the Women's Day and the women who have stood in the gap for you to say, Hey, we are women of God and we love God. And we pray that today is an incredible encouragement. Uh, move through the scriptures today. Yes. Allow, allow your people to, 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 to see themselves and find a way to be like you through the word of God. Amen. Father, I pray today that you bless the message. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. 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 Acts chapter 4. Oh my God. The Bible says this here. One of my favorite verses right here. Uh, he, he just simply says, Uh, In verse 18 here, of course, this is Peter and John before the Sanhedrin. And and, and dare we say that they, they they were having few issues with people how they felt about their relationship with God and what they were saying. It says, when they called them in, in verse 18, again, they commanded them not to speak or teach at all in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John replied, judge for yourselves, whether it's right in God's sight to obey you rather than God. For we cannot help speaking about what we have seen and heard and the church said. After further threats, They let them go. They cannot decide how to punish them because all the people were praising God for what had happened. For the man who was miraculously healed was about 40 years old. And all of us 40-year-old men in the church said, Amen. Amen. (laughs) You know, this is incredible. Uh, It's powerful, especially that a 40-year-old man can be healed. Uh, You know, this fires up people like 
Me. Come on, Michael. Exactly. Uh, you know, I, I, I just love the fact that God was not, uh, he just is an unstoppable God. You say, well, what does that mean? You know, I never forget the first person that invited me to church. Uh, he invited me to church, and of course, I did the only three responses that are in the Bible when the Word of God is put in your life. You either repent, you run, or you persecute. Yeah. Well, I didn't persecute, <laughs> and I didn't repent. I just ran. <laughs> and I was an athletic, so I was a good runner. <laughs> I just ran from God. Come on, uh, but the problem is that I, I met another person from church who invited me out. Yeah. God was just going after me. Then I met another person who invited me out. God was going after me. Mm. I met about 30 different individuals from the same church. Whoa. Then I finally come to church and, and I saw that everybody was so much on fire for God. Mm. Even the people that weren't on fire would get on fire with other people on fire. See, yeah. if you're not on fire for God, yeah. you can't light someone else on fire. Yeah. See, if you're a leader, if you're a disciple, you're wondering why you can't make a disciple, maybe you're not on fire. Yeah. Maybe you're not hot enough to light somebody else on fire. Are you with me right here? Yeah. I, I, I'm a barbecue man as well. <laughs> I, I love that. There's a lot about God in barbecue. Yeah. You can see the glory of God in a good barbecue. Yeah. And so, you know how barbecue is. You get that one stick, you light it on, and then it lights all the others right there because it's on fire one little spark can light a whole thing on fire but let me tell you something you can't light a bunch of wet wood yeah. And I pray today we're not wet wood disciples. Amen. Well, you're just too wet and sogged down by the world to get on fire for God. On. You're so you're so sad. God's power is not powerful enough to excite you right there. Yeah. Maybe it's Facebook has to get you going. Yeah. Maybe it's Instagram. Maybe, maybe the word of God doesn't get you going. I'm fired up about the word of God. Yeah. And it motivates me. It keeps me going. Yeah. Uh, that's what I say now after they lit me on fire. <laughs> but But there was a man who went after me for an entire year. He called me every single day. I, you know, that's back when you had voicemail message, not the cell phone messages, and you had home phones. I know that's foreign to many of you millennials out there. But there was a time when you had a landline, and you'd come home and you'd press the button to hear your messages. Every day I go, Beep, you have seven messages. Hey, this is so and so from the Portland International Christian Church. I'm going to invite you on out to church. Oh, my goodness, that's your delete. Next day, this is so-and-so, Portland International Christian Church. Want to invite you on out? Delete. Next day, this is so-and-so, Portland International. I looked at my account, an entire year they called me. Wow. An entire year. The only reason I called back, because I looked at my calendar, I'm like, this guy invited me last summer. (laughs) (laughs) It's now the next summer. So I called him back. I go, do you realize you've been calling me for for an entire year now? And this guy was, he was mixed race, but he wanted everyone to know that he had, you know, part of his mixed race had, he was half black and half white. So he wanted everyone to know about the black section of his mixed race. So he was super, he was like this. He go, I know my brother. I just want to read you scripture. Psalm chapter 36. And he'd share scripture. I said, what do you want? He goes, just want to encourage you. The Lord is after you. Wow. Want to know if you'd like to get lunch? I go, where? He goes, you choose. <laughs> I, of course, chose the most expensive place in town. <laughs> oh, my and, uh, you know, I go, I want to go there. And he goes, okay. He takes me out to lunch. I order the most expensive thing. I'm watching him. I'm eating the whole time looking at him. You know, and he's just, just there, and he just, you know, so how you doing? He's asking me all these questions I don't want to talk about. Where's your dad? What's your relationship like with your family? How'd you grow up? You have any good friends? Do you have any best friends? Who's your best friend? And, it's, and I'm just, it's like, it's just, it's just going after me right there. You know, you may be asked some of those questions today. Yeah. It's because God is going after you. Yes. And we as disciples can't help but speak. Yeah. As the first century disciples couldn't help but speak. And so he's just going after me, going after me. And at the end of it, he just says, you know, I just want to leave you with scripture and, and like you to come on out to church someday. I say, you want anything from me? He goes, no. He took me home and he dropped me off. He goes, have a nice day. I went in the house and cried like a two-year-old. <laughs> Nobody loves me. Oh, my God. And, and it moved my heart. Yeah. And it moves my heart to this day. Yeah. And it reminds me that God is unstoppable. Yeah. Come he on, is right. relentless. Mm. He will go yes. after you. Yes. I, I don't care whether you believe it or not. You, I'm here to tell you today. If you're here today, God is going after you. Yeah. Now, I know you think he needs to be going after some other people. Yeah. He needs to be going after no good husband I got. <laughs> he ain't even going after that wife. She needs to understand how awesome I am. <laughs> he ain't even going after those single brothers. Yes, about it. About it. 
Get those single sisters in line. They don't submit to us. Oh boy. No. God is going after you today. Amen. So can we go through this like God is going after you? Amen. Okay. The title of the lesson is Mission Unstoppable. Mission Unstoppable. You know, th- this is powerful because we find the only way to stop Christianity in the Bible. The only way to stop it is found in the text. Mm. The Bible just simply says, in verse 21, after further threats, they let them go. They could not decide how to punish them. Mm -hmm. They couldn't decide because these guys realized they could die. Mm -hmm. They realized they could die. In verse 18, it says they called them in again and commanded them what? Not to speak or teach at all in the name of Jesus. The only way to stop the gospel is to stop you. Wow. Yes. Have you stopped speaking? Are you telling people about Jesus? Are you telling people about God? Are you telling people with boldness there is only one God? Come on. Are you unstoppable? Come on. Does the culture stop you? Does the English poshness stop you? Wrong. Yes. Wrong. Come on, Michael. Does it stop you? Come on, Michael. What is it that stops you? Yeah. My pride stops me. I'm proud. Yeah. I'm, I'm not afraid. I'm just proud. I struggle with lust even to this day. I have to keep my, I have to guard my heart. I can get into arrogance and think I'm better than. I can struggle with even humility. Just, just, I don't, you don't deserve my attention. I, I can struggle with, 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 with just the, just the, just rejection. Oh no, I can tell they're going to reject me. Yeah. I can struggle with all kinds of sin on a daily basis. And there's only one thing that helps me out of that. It's the Word of God. (laughs) It's the Word of God. It really, really changes how I view life. What stops you? You know, I read this today and it shocked me. Two UK Christian preachers have been convicted of religiously aggravated public disorder. But they've won their appeal and are hailing it as a notable victory and an encouragement to Christians all across the the UK. Okay. The article reads this way. This is not an isolated case. How many times must we go to court before there is a respect for the law? Michael Overheard said following the victory at Bristol Crown Court Thursday at the BBC News reported, my heart bleeds for this country, but I am a patriot and I'll be back on the streets to preach again. Over 53, who called himself a Christian soldier, vowed that he will continue spreading the good news. Michael Stockwell, 51, the second preacher, who is also a former U.S. Marine, commented, I feel elevated that this is all over. My heart is full and still filled with love for the people of Bristol, and they have been able to hear the gospel being preached on the streets. When we were convicted of public order offenses in February, they were put put into jail for telling people Jesus is the only way. They were put in jail for preaching the gospel. We're going out Wednesday and you may not see a bunch of brothers, sisters next weekend because we're going to be telling everybody if they arrest us, we're going to do it anyway right there. We are not going to be stopped. You know, I I think about just a couple of weeks ago, uh, it it literally was, well, not a couple of weeks ago, a month ago, I got to share about your your brother, your your brother Alex right there. Uh, It was just last, literally, it feels like it was like six months ago, but it was just last month. I know it was last month because it was on my birthday when I baptized him, man. And so Alex went back to Brazil. And there's no church where he is at in Brazil. But he so he was so consistent. He came out to Bible talk, and he said we got 11, 12 visitors all the time. And so he just goes back to Brazil, and he goes, "I'm going to do exactly what I saw there, and I'm going to do Bible talk." He had his first Bible talk by himself in a city with no disciples. He had 21 people there. That's him. I ask again, what's stopping you? Good question. What is stopping you? How about it? You got anybody here today? You got anybody coming on out because the message is so powerful in your life. You got to share it with yeah. other people. You got to share it. You know, we got this guy named Bruno that he, he, he works at this restaurant. And I've been after him forever. And uh, I tried to persuade him to come here. He went to the West. Amen. 
Uh, my visitors over there, but amen. <laughs> okay, awesome. But he lives in the West, so that's great. Uh, but but I, I've just been going after him through text and through love, and, and it's been great to sharing my faith. And that keeps me focused. You know, sharing the gospel is not just to save the saved, it's to keep, it's not to save the lost, it's to keep the saved saved. Yeah. And I'm so proud of Alex to be praying because he's already applied for all the details. He wants to come back here, train as a preacher, and maybe plant the church in Portugal, Madrid, Spain, or wherever we actually have to have, have to send him. But he's coming back. He's unstoppable. I think about just a few weeks ago when Emmanuel got baptized right there. And uh, he, he sold out disciple, guys. He's in the South region now. Uh, that day, we had Josie baptized. Joe's still fired up. He got baptized. Lache dunked the basketball, but he got dunked himself. He got baptized. Jinya is from Russia, but she rushed on into the kingdom right here, and she plays membership. And last week, Rebecca got restored. And tonight at Women's Night Out, Maria Harwood will be baptized right there. See, the mission is unstoppable. It's unstoppable. It's unstoppable. Unless you let something stop it. Wow. Oh yeah, our sister Alex got baptized. Yeah. Right. yeah. There she is. She, she's trying to hide. She tried to hide on me right over there, and, then, and I saw that little glint. What's that little light over there? Oh, that's Alex. I forgot. See, it's awesome when you get some. You get, who else got baptized right here? It's great. Uh, but 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 we gotta tell someone. Who are you telling? About the mission. Do you realize the first century church did not get hindered by anything? They got killed. They got beaten. They went without food. But the mission was unstoppable. Acts chapter 12. You guys still with me here? Acts chapter 12. You know, one of the most unstoppable forces in the world. I I started thinking about it. And I thought, well, maybe it's my desire for chicken. That's a pretty unstoppable <laughs> force. Trust. You know? And then I realized that you know, a lot of black men love chicken. Yeah. Uh, and that, 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 that's the reason why I don't think Noah was a black man, because he couldn't have got those two chickens on that boat right there without them getting fried and dipped in some sauce or something like that. Uh, so, but, but when, I, when I think about unstoppable forces, you know, there's one force that's incredibly unstoppable. Now, we know that's the rain here in the UK sometimes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's an unstoppable oh, yeah. force. Uh, I thought about the water and the wind. But you know one of the most unstoppable forces? is prayer. Yes, it's true. You realize in Joshua chapter 10, prayer stopped the sun. Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. Prayer. Yep. God gives you access to one of the most unstoppable things in the world. The power of prayer. Dare we say prayer opens doors. And as we get into Acts chapter 12, we're going to see Peter's miraculous escape. How he gets thrown in jail, but he wakes up and a miracle happens. And this section always makes me remind, it reminds me of my lovely wife. Because Peter woke up to a miracle. And every day I get to wake up next to him. That's, that's Michelle Williamson. And all the married brothers feel the same, right? Come on, Martin. Wrong. Wrong. Okay, okay. We, okay, married brothers. All right. We may need to have some prayer. Amen. Prayer opens doors. Acts chapter 12. Prayer opens doors. Uh, it was about this time that the king Herod arrested some who belonged to to the church intending to persecute them. I mean, th- th- this is ev- everything you, uh, coming against the church that should stop it. Can you imagine the government coming down here and yanking people out of here and throwing them in jail? Can you imagine? That- that's what was going on. It wasn't just a couple of internet statements or this, that, and the other. He was arresting people. It says intending to persecute them. They had James, the brother of John, put to death with the sword. Man. So you you got to imagine this. People are getting arrested. And then somebody gets killed. killed. Yeah. How fired up would you be about the message? Um, yeah. To go out and say the very things that just got one of the preachers in your congregation murdered. Oh, killed. Yeah. Would the message be unstoppable? 
than Jesus did. You know what's so powerful is we think this is just in the Bible and a very clever story and yeah. something that happened back then. Oh no, we've had death threats at times. Yeah. Our brother Kemp has had death threats. Yeah. I've personally been threatened. Yeah. Don't often share it with you guys. But even just a few weeks ago, if you continue to preach that stuff, I'm going to come over from Africa and I'm going to do this to you. And so I sent back a very strong message. I simply said, love you. <laughs> come on now, bro. Come on. Then I got a little bit prideful. I said, LOL back. I probably shouldn't have done that. <laughs> but but no, I probably shouldn't have done that. I probably shouldn't have done that. I, probably have done that. I, probably, I had to get open about that. That was that's probably sinful. That's probably, I told you I struggled with sin right there, but I got to get open right there. See, at least you can get open in the kingdom of God. Now, I don't know what sin you're in right there, but see, maybe afterwards you need to get open about your stuff as well. See, I can, I can put on a pedestal here. I got to tell my stuff. You got to tell your stuff too. But, but right here, they're threatened. Yeah. They're threatened. Yeah. Top preacher gets murdered. Wow. Gets killed. Man, I, I bet the church would have been depressed. Yeah. Can you imagine? You ever been to a funeral? I have. Yeah. They're not always the most inspirational moments no. in life. No. Right? Yet the kingdom is a banquet. Yeah. It's a feast. Yeah. It's not a funeral. Yeah. I pray the kingdom is a feast, not a funeral for you. Right, that when you come to the kingdom of God, you thirst and hunger for righteousness. Ooh, you come and you eat it all yeah. up. Yeah. You eat up the faith. You eat up the encouragement. Oh. You eat it all up. It's oh. not a funeral. You come, oh no, I got to become a Christian. Oh, oh Lord. You got your chain and commitment. You got your chain. You got your ball and chain. A civil rights Christian right there. Oh, I got to go to Women's Day tonight. Oh, God. Oh, he's going to disciple me on coming to church on time again. Oh, i got to come to church on time. Oh, I don't know if I can do this anymore. So challenging. Oh, you don't know how bad I got it. I wonder if first century Christians would show up and really believe that we are true disciples. Come on, bro. They start sharing their week. Ooh, yeah. Come on. And we start going, okay, wow, we, 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 we are embarrassed. The message has started to be a little bit stoppable in our hearts. But we know that prayer opens doors. It says this in verse 3. When they saw this pleased the Jews, he proceeded to see Peter also. This happened in the feast of unleavened bread. After arresting him. He put him in prison, had him went over to be guarded by four squads on four soldiers. He has 16 guys that are guarding, <laughs> guarding Peter here. Herod intended to bring him out for public trial after the pass over. So Peter was kept in prison, but the church was earnestly praying to God for him. Amen. I, this is awesome. This is about 41 AD, and, 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 and you know, this is just, this is not a, a long after the church, or not that long after the church had got going right there. And the Bible just says when things got tough, the church was praying yeah. for Peter. I, I, I know you're praying for your leaders. Yeah. Yeah. I, know, I don't have to ask you if you prayed for your leaders today. I, I know you prayed for me today. Yeah. Yeah. I, know, I know that. I, I, some of you are not looking at me right now. Okay, amen. All right, I appreciate that. Okay. Verse 6. The night before Herod was to bring him to trial. Look at this, guys. Look, look, look at this. The night before Herod was to bring him to trial. The night before. What just happened? James just got killed. They're getting persecuted. James just got killed. Peter's in jail. And as we go through it, he has no clothes on. Totally humiliated by the world. And the night before he goes to trial, what, what do you think he, he's thinking? He's going to get killed, right? Let's find out Peter's heart. It says, the night before the trial, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers. <laughs> he's sleeping. Peter's like, <clears throat> That's all right. I think I'll take a nap. <laughs> you guys just, you know, killed my buddy. Told me not to preach. Put me in jail. I'm doing the will of God. I'm all good. Come on. I'm going to have a sleep here. <laughs> and he just knocks out and goes to sleep. <laughs> Why? Now you got to remember. James is one of the, remember James is one of the guys that said, hey, we can drink the cup <laughs> in Matthew chapter 28 or Matthew chapter 20, verse 20 through 28. And we see he did drink the cup. It was the cup of death. Yeah. 
And of course, we see Peter right here in jail. And I started asking, man, he's totally sleeping. Why? John chapter 21. John chapter 21. Look at this here. Yes. Why was he so content during one of the most challenging times of his life? Verse 18. After Jesus restores him, after he fell away, he does even greater things. We know that because that's where we are in the book of Acts. See, you can do greater things the second time around. But the Bible says in verse 18, as Jesus is restoring Peter when he had fallen away, he says, I tell you the truth. When you were younger, you dressed yourself and you went where you wanted. But when you were old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. Jesus said this to indicate the kind of death by which Peter would glorify God. Then he said to him, follow me. Peter lived his entire life knowing exactly how he was going to die. Why? Jesus told him. That's the first thing. How'd you like to know exactly how you were going to die? I don't want to know how I'm going to die. I want to die right next to Michelle. I want to have a cranking wedding celebration like last week. See baptism, see marriages, go home, kiss my kids fall asleep to my lovely wife and never wake up again. (laughs) And all of a sudden I made it to heaven. This is awesome. That would be a great way to go out. Quick and in my sleep. I don't want to get eaten by lions or anything or choke on a rib or a chicken bone or anything like that. (laughs) You know, I definitely don't want to, you know, you know what I mean? Can you imagine knowing how you're going to die for the rest of your life? You imagine the level of trust in God you would have to have? You imagine the level of commitment to God you'd have to have to know how you were going to die. Jesus told him exactly how he was going to die, but he also told him that he'd die in his old age. So we understand the reason why Peter was content, because he held on to the promises of God. Powerful. He held on. Are you holding on to the promises of God? He knew he wasn't going to die that night. He said, I'm not old yet. The word of God says, I'm going to live a long life. And God told me how I'm going to die. I'm going to die an old man faithful. And so it doesn't matter what the world says. It doesn't matter what the world does. It doesn't matter what my family says. It doesn't matter what anybody says. I'm going to hold on. In fact, I'm going to hold on. So I'm going to be so content I can go to sleep at night. Do you sleep with peace? Can you sleep at night? Peter was sleeping because he was holding on. And he trusted God. He held on to the promises of God. You guys still with me here? Check it out. Verse 7. Suddenly an angel of the Lord appeared and a light shone in the cell. He struck Peter on the side and woke him up. (laughs) Quick, get up, he said. And the chains fell off Peter's wrists. The angel said to him, put on your clothes and sandals. You catch that right there, right? Yeah. Mm. Why put them on? Because he didn't have any on. (laughs) And Peter did so. Wrap your cloak around you and follow me, the angel told him. Peter followed him out of the prison, but he had no, no idea an angel... Uh, was doing was really happening he thought he was sleeping and uh, seeing a vision they passed the first and the second guards and came to the iron gate leading out of the city or leading to the city it opened for them by itself and they went through it when they had walked the length of one street suddenly the angel left him then peter came to himself and said i know without a doubt the lord sent his angels and rescued me from herod's clutches and from everything the jewish people were anticipating and now we got to understand this isn't the first time that peter gets gets uh thrown in jail this is this is the second time this is the second time he's in a prison you know sometimes we can be in prison the prison of your mind you know, I'm so excited about the Women's Day. Yes. <laughs> Even I'm a man. <laughs> because I, I got a chance to hear a few snippets of my wife's speech. And it was so convicting, I go, man, I want to go to Women's Day. <laughs> <laughs> but here stands a woman who, who, who really was enslaved to all kinds of challenges and issues. And who God has stooped down to elevate and make great. Amen. Come on, I'm so proud of her. I know she's going to do an incredible job tonight. And of course we see that angels are ministering spirits. Of course, 185,000 angels killed a bunch of Assyrian, or one angel killed 185,000 in one night. So we see this just, the angels are very powerful. They open the doors here and of course it was prayer that initiated it. Yet I think 
Sometimes we can be in prison, the prison of our mind. We can be imprisoned by the, the culture we've been raised in. We can, be impri- we can even be imprisoned by religion. Where you are not free. You claim to be a Christian, but you are not joyful. You are not happy. Christianity is a chore. It is hard. It is a mean religion. It restricts you. It is not joyful. You realize God created joy? I think God is fired up. I think God is joyful. The Bible says he rejoices over you with singing. That's got to be a pretty fired up God to look at Germany and see that they just accepted gay marriage. And then God goes, you know what? Those are still my kids. I'm rejoicing over them with singing. The UK did it a while back. I'm rejoicing over them with singing. Amsterdam, they were the first to initiate it. I'm still rejoicing over Amsterdam with singing. I'm fired up about Amsterdam. Even though they're, they're tolerating every kind of sin, I still love them. I think God is fired up. I believe that. And I try to imitate that as best as I can. Are you happy? Are you fired up? Are you enslaved? Are you in prison? Peter was in prison. But I think sometimes we can be in the prison of our mind. Where our mind tells us who we are instead of us getting our identity from the word of God. And I challenge you to take a selfie through the eyes of God. Stop looking at what the picture says. Look at what this says about you. Now, some of us think we look better than we do. Yeah. You ever taken a selfie? You do the Photoshop? You know how that goes? Yeah. Now, maybe I'm the only one right there to like get the cheekbones and stuff going. Throw some filters. See, there's no filters in the kingdom of God. There's no filters in the word of God. You don't get to make your eyes bigger and your face skinnier. You don't get to do all of that. The only way your eyes get bigger is when you see your sin. The only way your face gets skinnier is when you stop eating on the things that don't help you. Right? And you start th- hurt, hungering and thirsting for righteousness. Are you enslaved? Are you in prison? Prayer opens doors. Prayer opens doors. You know, as we go through this, I, I got I to, gotta, uh, you know, I, I've read the book of Acts so many times. And you know, there's one thing that shocks me about the first century church. They, 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 people dying, going to jail, naked in jail, and they're going through it. Yes. Yes. You know, the one thing that you don't ever hear, you, it was only one time. <clears throat> one time do you see it in the, in the book of Acts. And that was a legitimate issue, and they dealt with it. But the one thing you don't hear about from the first century church is the section in the book of Acts where they are grumbling and complaining. So I would argue that a church that's grumbling and complaining is not the church in the Bible. Now, we know that we are the church. So when we are grumbling and complaining about the things that have happened in our life, be it past or future. you got to understand right here. Why did James die? Why did Peter get a chance to live? James died. We read earlier, he died. <coughs> Peter didn't. Why? God is sovereign. Amen. God is sovereign. He knows the end of your race. He knows the beginning. God is awesome. He's not stuck in time. He's outside of time. Right. He's created the world and is watching he created history and is watching it unfold that's how awesome God is he created past present future he's up here watching this he's in LA he's in New York he's in Chicago he's everywhere at the same time he's in New York he's, he's, in, he's in Africa he's all over he's outside of us and, and it's through us all around us God is amazing yeah. Yeah. that is God and yet with all of that God is sovereign yeah. That means everything in your life that's happened, he's caused it or he's allowed it to happen. Yeah. 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 So if he's caused it, amen. Yeah. If he's allowed it, amen. Yeah. <laughs> and you know what amen means? So be it. So be it. Yeah. <laughs> so be it. They had to say, what? James died, Peter didn't. Ah, because of the sovereignty of God. We don't need to know why. Yeah. You ever done that? Something happened bad, you go, oh, it must have been the devil. Something happened bad. Oh, well, is God punishing me? Yeah. Well, the answer is yes. <laughs> it was the devil and it was God. Yes. <laughs> it was both. Yes. Because God is sovereign. Yes. When you understand that God is sovereign, when bad things happen, you go, well, God allowed it. When other things happen, you go, well, God allowed it. The church understood the sovereignty of God. The church understood when certain people would be taken out and stayed. They understood. They did not get sucked into grumbling and complaining. Look at Exodus chapter 16. Yeah. Exodus 16. You guys still with me here? Yeah, yeah. Bro, come on. Just got to check. Okay. Exodus chapter 16. The Bible says this here. Let's go to the history of God's people. 
Why? History repeats itself. It has to because no one listens. Verse 2. In the desert, the whole community, this is as soon as they get saved. They come out of Egypt, right? As soon as they get saved, right? And remember, you're saved to serve. They get saved, and the Bible says in uh, Exodus 16, verse 2, it says, in the desert, the whole community grumbled against Moses and Aaron. The Israelites said to them, only we have died by the Lord's hand in Egypt. (laughs) There we sat around pots of meat. Liars. (laughs) <laughs> ate all the food we wanted that's why we're obese but you have brought us into this desert to starve this entire assembly to death it's pretty encouraging come to church and hear that right look at verse 8 Moses also said you will know that it was the Lord when he gives you meat to eat in the evening and all the bread you want in the morning because he has heard your grumbling against him. Who are we? You are not grumbling against us, but against the Lord. Yeah. I, wanna, I, want, I want you to see from the Bible that all grumbling and complaining is not grumbling and complaining against the individual or the agent that God has put in your life. Right. Grumbling and complaining is grumbling against God. Yeah. Wow. And when you grumble and complain, you're complaining against God, you'll bring judgment on yourself. Yes. Now, we are commanded as, as disciples to be each other's, our brother's keeper, dare yeah. we say. Yeah. Right? And so there is accountability. There is discipling. There is, dare we say, uh, uh, you know, we, we point out the flaws or the weaknesses. We speak the truth in love. Yes. Brother, I want to help you. There's this thing I think you could have done better. Sister, you could have done this better. Hey, leaders, can, can I talk to you about this issue? I want to talk to you about this. You know, one person said to me, you know, there's issues in the church. <laughs> There's problems in the church. I go, you know why? Because you're in it. (laughs) Now, the great thing about being a Christian is you're saved. But we're a bunch of problems sitting in this room. Got white problems. Golden problems. Mocha problems. Darker mocha problems. We got vanilla problems. We're all problems. The church is full of problems. The church of Revelation... Chapter 2 of Ephesus, God says, you have persevered, you've endured hardship, you've done this, you've done this, you've done this. You know. Yet I hold this against you. They had a problem. Mm-hmm. The other church, you've done this, you've done this, you did, but you tolerate Jezebel. Mm-hmm. Another church, well, you, you this, you this, you this, but you're lukewarm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Another church, this, you this, but you're sad. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Church in Corinth, Corinth had sexual immorality going on in it. Yeah. The church in Rome had wicked arrogance. Of course, that was in Europe. (laughs) They were wickedly arrogant. (laughs) Is there a God? Uh, Yeah, just look at the trees. Of course. Well, I don't see God here on earth. You don't look for the creation inside of creation necessarily. The creator's got to be outside of creation. You don't look for, uh, all of us have a phone. You don't go, okay, I wonder if I can find who made this Samsung phone inside the phone. You have to look outside the phone. You got to look outside this world to find who created it. And that's what they struggle with in Europe, in Rome. All the churches have issues. But see, when the message is unstoppable... And issues become bigger than the biggest issue, which is the lostness of the world. Wow. That's when you started falling away from God. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. You started falling away from God. When you get sucked into grumbling and complaining. Mm-hmm. You know, we can even grumble and complain against ourselves. Mm-hmm. We can complain about ourselves. Yeah. Oh, I'm not where I need to be. I'm not who I am. Oh, I'm not this. I'm not that. Yeah. And if we don't feel confident about ourselves, how are we going to feel confident about anyone else? Yeah. Yet our confidence must come from the Bible. We see that history repeats itself. The disciples here, the Israelites, they they grumbled and and, and complained uh, that that this was not good. Grumbling poisons the entire group. The Bible says the whole community grumbled. Why is it dangerous? It can poison an entire church. It can harden your heart. It gives you a warped sense of things. When you're a grumbler and a complainer, you are warped. Your view is completely wrong. They're like, we sat around pots of meat. No, you didn't. We had it better in Egypt. No, you didn't. You were enslaved. But when you are a grumbler complainer, you start looking at the world going, it's so much better to look at internet pornography all day. Wow. So much better. That feels so much better. I mean, it's quick. It's so much better to to leave my husband and fall away. Mm. 
because he's calling me to commitment. So much better. I guess that's better because I don't agree. So much better to, 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 you know, to look, the world says it's okay, same sex marriage. Well, I, I felt this way ever since I was born. You can be born again. Are, are you with me here? Yeah. I want to drive the spirit of grumbling and complaint. The first century church didn't get into that. They, they didn't get into that. They were too busy with the message and they were unstoppable with the message. You don't find individuals focused on making disciples, baptizing, complaining about the issues in the church. Because they're reading their Bible, they say, yeah, the church has issues. <laughs> but the biggest issue is the lostness of the world. That's the big issue. Matthew chapter 14. How do you cure grumbling? You go, man, I have a grumbling spirit. Man, you just preached to me right there. Now I guess I have no hope. No, don't worry. We all can struggle, okay? But let me help you understand how to overcome that spirit. Matthew chapter 14. The Bible says this in verse 20. They all ate and were what? Satisfied. And the disciples picked up the 12 basketfuls of broken pieces that were left over. The number of those who ate was about 5,000 men besides women. The way to overcome grumbling and complaining about anything is to let Jesus himself satisfy you. See, when you're satisfied by God, nothing else can steal your joy. But when other things become greater than God, you become stoppable. But when you are satisfied by God, no man can fulfill you. No woman can fulfill you. No leadership role can fulfill you. No job in this world can fulfill you. No status can make you fired up. Nothing can get you more excited. than Nothing can fulfill you when you're satisfied by God. Are you satisfied today? Are you satisfied? We got to preach today. Let's go back to Acts chapter 12. Come on, Michael. Come on, Michael. Acts chapter 12. God is still on the move. He is on the move. And you know what's so powerful about Acts chapter 12 here after we see this incredible they're praying they're asking for God because prayer opens doors they're they're asking for God to move on behalf and get Peter out and of course Peter comes out and then uh, Peter Peter understands hey an an angel saved me and it says in verse 13 Peter comes to the house of of, of the disciples because they were praying for him and and the Bible says Peter knocked at the outer entrance and a servant girl named Rhoda came to answer the door when she recognized Peter's voice she was so overjoyed, she ran back without opening it. <laughs> Peter's at the door! <laughs> I can see a single sister right there. Oh my goodness, Frank is at the door! <laughs> Frank is at the door! Frank is at the door! Did you let him in? <laughs> no, we didn't. I just know he's at the door. <laughs> Look at this. They're praying. They're praying, right? Look at verse 15. You're out of your mind, they told her. When she kept insisting that it was so, they said it must be his angel. Come on, boys. Your prayers can move God. Your prayers can change your 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 prayers can change your life right this moment. But the answer to your prayers may be right at your front door. Yeah. Wow. Right at your front door. Wow. See, I want to be fruitful. You may be the answer to your prayers. Start sharing your faith. Open the door of your own heart and start sharing your faith. Yeah, yeah. Say, I want a better marriage. You're, you're the answer. Yeah. You know how to change your marriage? Change yourself. Mm. Yes. Yeah. That's how you change your marriage. Stop trying to change other people. You can't change people. Yeah. You can't change people. <clears throat> you know who changes people? God. God. Oh, yes. And if you're camping out and trying to change somebody, it's because you don't understand the power of prayer. Yeah. Let me tell you something. Some of the most powerful movements in my marriage have not come because Michelle has changed this or changed that. It's become because I've decided to change. And I've realized that the answer to my prayers is right at my front door. What front door? The door of your heart. Open your heart today. Open the door of your heart today. Change. Change today. Change. Don't wait another day. Today matters for the men in the Bible. Today matters for the women in the Bible. Today matters for you today. The Bible says here, verse 16, Peter kept on knocking. <laughs> and when they opened the door, they saw him. They were astonished. Peter motioned with his hand to be quiet. You know how you have to do that with disciples. Guys, keep, keep it down. A little fired up. So he motioned for them to, to be quiet. And he described how the Lord had brought him out of prison. Tell James and the brothers about this, he said. And they left for another place. In the morning, there was no small commotion among the soldiers as to what had, hap- as to what had co- become of Peter. After Herod 
had thought had a thorough search made for him and did not find him, he cross-examined the guards and ordered that they be executed. Now, of course, it was a capital offense to let people go, so they got killed for it. Yeah. Then Herod went from Judea to Caesarea, and he stayed there for a little while. He had been quarreling with the people of Tyre and Sidon. They joined together and sought an audience with him. Having secured the support of Blastus, the trusted personal servant of the king, they asked for peace because they depended on the king's country for their food supply. Man, when you depend on the government for all your needs, you'll change gods. They're dependent on the government to take care of them. God get those benefits. And yet the only benefits are really the ones you get in the kingdom. And the Bible says if you don't work, you don't eat. That's the reason why we believe in working. Now, if you're on benefits, amen, you take that blessing. But, hey, let's not stay on benefits right there. Are, are you with me here? Did we see this, this section right here where it hurt the people of God. It made them get very sensitive and a little bit soft-hearted and sentimental with the government. Because they, they oh, i gotta, I got to submit to them. And so they changed gods. And they worshiped Herod. Right. Because the Bible says on verse 21, on the, uh, on the appointed day, Herod, wearing the royal robe, sat on the throne and delivered a public address to the people. They shouted, this is the voice of a God, wow. not a man. Wow. Immediately, because Herod did not give praise to God, an angel of the Lord struck him down, and he was eaten by worms and died. But the word of God continued to increase and spread. <laughs> the God, you can't stop God. You can't stop the word of God. Since the word of God continues to increase and spread, we do not believe in worshiping man. We don't believe in worshiping people. Um, they worshiped Herod. It hurt their faith. They didn't give glory to God. Neither did Herod. And we see what happened right here. We've got to give glory to God. Well, as we go to chapter 13, we start to see a shift. The gospel begins to be on the move. That's our second point. The gospel's on the move. I pray the gospel's in the move of your heart today. Yes. And you say, how's it moving? Well, we, 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 Peter Jeep, Jeep leaps off the page, and then all of a sudden Paul takes over the ministry. Mm. From chapter 13 on, it's really about Paul pushing the gospel to the ends of the earth mm. right there. And it's very interesting because in chapter 13, it's about 46 AD. This is a good maybe... Uh, you know, probably about two years after Peter's miraculous escape. It says, In the church at Antioch, there are prophets and teachers. Barnabas, which means son of encouragement. Yeah. Simeon, called Niger. Many believe this is because Simeon was from Nigeria. And we've got a Nigerian prince here with you today, right there. From Ni- He's going to preach the word to you about the communion in just a moment. So you've got to have black folks in the church as well. Amen. Okay? <laughs> Niger means black. Lucius of Cyrene. Yet another uh, nationality. Yep. Manan, who had been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch. This is this is God, this was a private school kid. Yeah. He was brought up with Herod the Tetrarch. Yeah. This was a smart kid. But you remember Herod the Tetrarch, he's the one who killed John the Baptist? Yeah. Yeah. See, you can grow up in a home where people hate Jesus. Yeah. And you can become a sold out disciple. Yeah. You can be unstoppable. Yeah. The, the, nothing can stop you. Not how you were brought up, not your family, not your mom, not your dad, not anything you've gone through. This guy went through a household where they totally hated God. And he still became a sold out disciple. Not only that, he became a leader. Verse 2. While they were worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, Set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. Is it the Holy Spirit that sets them apart? No. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, it is. Yes. 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 It says, While they were worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, yeah. Set them up, set up, set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I've called them. So after they prayed and fasted, they placed their hands on them and sent them off. And the church said, Amen. "It's the Holy Spirit that sends everybody where they're going. Yeah. It's the Holy Spirit that sent uh, our brother Sean Corrigan to Birmingham to preach the word today. Oh, yeah. He's preaching the word right there. Okay, it is the Holy Spirit right there. Now, when we are a Bible church and we look at things in a biblical way, we go, no." Michael didn't send him there. The Holy Spirit sent him there. Yes. Yes. When we are a spiritual church and we have the word of God, it's in our heart. We're reading the Bible. We have a Bible view. We go, uh, 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 Michelle isn't calling me to, to Women's Day. It's the Holy Spirit calling me to Women's Day. Okay. When, when we understand it's the Bible and we have a Bible response, we go, no, no, no. Uh, you know, it, It's the Holy Spirit sending me here. It's the Holy Spirit sending me there. I love Tulani. Tulani understood. I am from Nigeria. There was a call for Nigeria to be, to be a sold out church. I've got to go down there being a sold out church. It's the Holy Spirit sending me to Nigeria and he's doing great things for God in Nigeria and I can't wait to hear him share today 
I've been so proud of the church. We, we got our four regions, right? Yes. But the Holy Spirit is on the move. The gospel is on the move. Yes. And so we, we understand. We are going to be sending out the supplemental mission team to Paris, France. Right. We're only a few weeks away. Anthony Ooh, and Cassidy yeah. are going to be yeah. sent on their way by the Holy Spirit to Paris, France to get France going. And it, this is awesome because... That means somebody else has to step up. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. And so what, what, what's happening? Colby and Rebecca, the Holy Spirit is going to be bringing Colby and Rebecca over to the West region. Amen. So in the next couple of weeks, we already sat down and we're going through all the changes and everything. They will be leading the West region right there. Amen. They'll be coming out of the East and taking over that great work. You say, who's going to lead the East? Oh, cool. You need somebody big in the East. Somebody. There we say you got to have the beast in the East. Right. So the biggest beast we have is the son of encouragement right here. And it's not this son of encouragement. It's the son of encouragement, Michael Hart. Yeah. Okay, so Michael Maria Hart. They will be taking over the work in the east side of the church right there. Okay, and you say, well, well what's going to happen in the north? Oh, boy. Oh. 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 Who's going? Who's going? I'm going to stay. We're going to keep making preaching. Oh, yeah. Sometimes you got to go. Sometimes you got to stay. <laughs> but. This this, this does this does this, we we will be raising up. I, I, I'm one go. We got to raise up preachers right here. And, and, and I know I know Yuri's going for it. Yuri's going to be a preacher. He's going to be a preacher. Frank's going for it. He wants to be a preacher. And there's a few others. I'm going to go after you right here because we need some women's ministry leaders. Okay, we need some, it is Women's Day. Okay, we need some women's ministry leaders. Okay, and so 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 because the gospel's on the move right there. We got to keep moving. So what? going to happen in the south. The south region will be changed into a sector. It, we will keep our foothold down there. We will, no one will move, no one will, it, but it will be changed into a sector. You say, why is that? We, 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 they, they, it's a bit of smaller, smaller of a region and they don't have enough, as many resources. So I will be going down to the south to supplement as well as going over to the east to supplement on top of them being led by the west. So how the structure in the church is going to break down is very simple. The north will oversee the east. The West will oversee the South. And as we strengthen the South, we will raise up a leader either from the North who will go down there or we'll raise up a leader from the South so that it can be officially called a sector. After all, if the Chicago church had 70 additions with only one full-time couple, we could do it right here. That's the reason why you have to have an international church so you can have an international movement so you can be the church in the Bible right there. The gospel is on the move and as Paul takes over, he just forcefully advances everything and it's awesome. Let's keep going and bring it in for a close. Verse 4. So the two of them sent on their way by the Holy Spirit went down to Seleucia and they sailed to Cyprus. When they arrived at Salmas, they proclaimed the word of God in the Jewish synagogue. John was with them as their helper. Isn't this amazing? They went to crank this entire city with one intern. Yeah. Two guys and one intern. That's pretty awesome. That's awesome yeah. When you get to the chapter 18 of the book of Acts, Paul the apostle starts a church. Guess what? how many people? By himself. Yeah. How'd you like to be a mission team? You only, it's just you. He went, to a church, he went to a city by himself and started a church. Yeah. <laughs> See, when the word of God is in you, you are unstoppable. Yeah. When it's of God, you are unstoppable. Yeah. You've been stopped. You've got to question whether you are really walking with God. Oh, yeah. You can let nothing stop you. Okay, it says here in verse 6, They traveled through the whole island until they came to Paphos. There they met a Jewish sorcerer and a false prophet named Bar-Jesus. Luke doesn't even you know Bar Jesus means son of son of Jesus. Yeah. Luke doesn't even put son of Jesus in it. No. Luke says I'm not going to I'm not going to give this guy that glory. No this way. is Bar Jesus. Bar Jesus. Yeah. A prophet named Bar Jesus, who's an attendant, pro, attendant of the proconsul, Sergius Paulus, the proconsul, an intelligent man, sent for Barnabas and Saul because he wanted to hear the word of God. But Elymas the sorcerer, for that is what his name means, opposed them and tried to turn the proconsul from the faith. Then Saul, who was called Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, looked straight at Elymas and said, "You are a child of the devil, oh an enemy of everything that is right. You are all full of all kinds of deceit and trickery. We ever stop perverting the right ways of the Lord. The hand of the Lord is against you. You are going, you're going, to, you're going to be blind. And for that time, you'll be unable to see the light of sun. Immediately, mist and darkness came over him, and he dropped about, seeking someone to lead him by the hand. When the proconsul saw what had happened, he believed, for he was amazed at the teaching about the Lord. <laughs> Verse 13, from Paphos, Paul and his companions sailed to Perga and Pamphylia where John left them. 
to return to Jerusalem. Oh boy. Things are moving. But John quits. He goes back. Yeah. And he goes back to Jerusalem. Now you've got to remember, up until this point, most of the Bible text says Barnabas and Paul. Why? Barnabas was older, been around a lot longer. He also was relative to John Mark right here. Yeah. And so he kind of was the, the main guy. He was the main force. When they went into the Jewish synagogue, because he had those relationships, he was able to open doors that Paul wasn't able to open at that stage. But when the gospel starts to move and God raises up a leader, you better get behind it right there. You better not fight God or oppose God or you'll find yourself fighting against God. And so Paul starts to take over the leadership of the movement and things start moving and going. But John Mark, and there's so many reasons as to the reason why John Mark went back. Some say, hey, because they went up a hill and planted a church that was way up a hill and was such a hard work, this guy was a mama's boy. (laughs) Didn't like hard work. So he wanted to go back to Jerusalem. Others think that he may have caught malaria because some say that Paul must have caught malaria. He must have got an illness after he talks about 2 Corinthians. The Bible's unclear. Others think of various different things. Some think, you know, they just he didn't like leadership changes. He didn't like Paul's hard, heavy, straight, direct, bold approach. And you know, sometimes th- th- that's that is the case. Sometimes you go, hey, I want to don't don't be so strong. Don't be so. I just want a softer, easy kind of message. Just a calm. Tell me how awesome I am. Jesus loves me. Courage, man. It's too intense. You know, we say that, but man, you go to a football match in London. Face painting, screaming, singing on the tubes. No embarrassment at all. But the moment we start talking the word of God, sometimes we can feel that way. We don't want that strong force in our lives, and we need that strong force called God in our lives. And so John Mark falls away. He goes back. We know that Luke chapter 9 says uh, that no one who looks back is fit for service in the kingdom of God. No one who looks back. I'm also reminded of the only woman in scripture in the New Testament that is called a woman who looked back. That's Lot's wife. She looked back. She looked back. John Mark looked back. He went back. He went back to Jerusalem. Now he got strengthened and came back. But that's after the truth of God's word sat in his heart. Paul says, dude, you're not ready for the work. You deserted us. You're not ready. And that strong statement sat in his heart on top of the encouragement. A lot of commentators say, well, it was Barnabas that got him so... Barnabas healed him and got him going and sent him back to Paul. Let me tell you something. Barnabas disappears from scripture after this moment. Is a little... We got about two more chapters and before you know it, you don't hear about Barnabas anymore. Mm -hmm. See, that can happen in the kingdom of God. When things start moving, the gospel's on the move and leadership changes, noted heroes of the faith can disappear from Scripture. They stop becoming the son of encouragement and they become the son of discouragement. This has happened in our church. We're going to Hong Kong at the end of this year. We're fired up. We're going to Paris in a little bit. We're fired up. We're seeing miracles all over the place. We're fired up. We're fired up. But let me tell you something. Satan, when when, when God is working, Satan is lurking. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Come on, bro. He's lurking. We had a conversation with a brother. I said, brother, um, hey, that's gossipy. That's slander. She can't do that. Please don't do that. He did not repent. Brother, that's slanderous. You cannot do that. He still did not repent. Brother, this is the way the leadership is doing it. I don't like it. You have to repent of that. Brother, this is the way the leadership is going. You have to get behind it. I don't agree. You're not doing it right. Well, brother, in Deuteronomy 17, it says, when you show contempt for the judge, which means leader, you're supposed to be taken out. I just want to share that scripture. It's a strong one. I know it's tough, but can you please stop doing that? Well, I got an attitude even with L.A., well, brother, you, you, you gotta, you, you can't, you gotta get unified with LA. If you're not unified with LA, you're not unified with London. Mm-hmm. We are one family. Yeah. Yes. I want to challenge you. you. Got five days. Call LA and get unified. Oh. Called LA, didn't get unified. Oh, Sent a text saying, "I'm falling away. Oh, wow. I'm leaving." I said, "Well, brother, I, I'm commanded by the scriptures in Matthew chapter 18 to to share with you that you." You know, if I can't win you over to bring two or three others, and if two or three others can't win you over, then we try to, uh, again, and if they can't win you over, then we got to tell it to the church. Yeah, sure. And if we tell it to the church, and that still doesn't humble you and bring you back to your senses, then we just got to pray for you. we got to treat you like a tax cut. That means you're a non-Christian. Yeah. That means we will not phone call you and all that kind of stuff. 
we, we will wait for you to come back. After all, when someone falls away, they have to be brought. They, they can't be brought back. They have to come back. That's why Hebrews says, when someone falls away, it's impossible to bring them back because they have to come back. When you look at the prodigal son, nobody phone called him. Yeah. He had to come to his senses on his own. Yeah. And then he came back because we know everything when we've been in the kingdom. We know what we need to do. We just don't want to do it. We don't want to repent and say, I was wrong, I sinned, and I blew it. And this is the reason why our brother George Grimmett has fallen away. Wow. Yep, he's fallen away. And I say this not to shame, not to be down on him. I am praying. I want him to come back. I, I love George. It breaks my heart, actually. It breaks my heart. It really makes me sad. Uh, but I'm commanded by the Bible and the Scriptures to teach the whole counsel of God. Not just the comfortable bits that say, hey, you can be unstoppable. You can get saved. But also the tough parts. Yeah. That when the gospel is on the move and the gospel is, is working, Satan is lurking. Yeah. He is going after people. We have to be on our guard. Yeah. John Mark went back and got strong, came back. I pray that he comes back, but for now he has left the kingdom of God. He has left the kingdom of God. He is not a disciple. And I pray that he does come back. Yes. And I pray that you are praying yeah. for him. Yeah. The Bible says in Proverbs 29, a man who remains stiff necked after many rebukes will be suddenly destroyed without remedy. Yeah. The uh, message version says people who hate discipline only get more stubborn. Yeah. There will come a day when, when life tumbles in and they break. But by then, it will be too late to help them. Yeah. You know, I hear stories like that one and I have to share stories like that and it just makes me go, wow, I don't want to be stiff necked. <laughs> Yeah. I don't want to be stiff neck. Now, let me let me just inform you. The Christian life is a fight. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's a battle. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Now for the guys, you know, we got the leather gloves. For the girls, you got the pretty pink gloves on. <laughs> you know, you punch him with your little jab of love. You're, yeah, yeah, yeah. you're doing your little right hook of faith. And you know, I can see you know, my my wife actually she's got strong gloves on, Francis. She's got the brothers the gloves the brothers has on. You don't know that, but I've gotten some blows from her a couple of times. She said, Babe, you need to listen more. You need to listen more. You don't listen to people like you need to go deeper in your love. Okay, I'm getting tagged here. I'm trying to get my guard up, but I just just go go ahead and take it right there. You know. And so you know, it reminds, you know, of course, Manny Pacquiao got knocked out. <laughs> got knocked out. He got in there with that Australian and he thought he was so confident in his flesh. Didn't train the same way and got knocked out. We can put no confidence in the flesh. But we get taken out. You know, I love boxing and one of the favorite phrases about boxing is you got to roll with the punches. You know, today you got to roll with the punches. What does that mean? That means when, when a punch is thrown at you as a fighter. The wise fighter either does a Floyd Mayweather and they shoulder roll. And so you don't hit the face, you hit the shoulder, which doesn't hurt. The other does what's called, they roll with the punch. So as the punch is coming, instead of you going, being stiff neck. (laughs) You know, I've been working out. Hold on to my opinion. There's a hit coming to my marriage. I'm going to stay with my opinion. It's a hit coming to the kingdom. No, you got to roll with the punches. That means when the punch comes, you know it's coming. You see it and you go, uh, when you roll with the punches, actually you can take more shots. You can fight a lot longer. But when you harden your neck, you can get knocked out by the punches that come in the kingdom of God. Are you with me here? Listen, we're going to get hit. We're going to get punched. We've got to roll with it. If you harden your neck to it, you harden your heart to it. You can get taken out of the kingdom as well. We got to roll with the punches. Mm-hmm. We don't want to remain sit back. We want to be a church that's consistently having outreach in spite of opposition, and we don't quit. And that's our last point: outreach in spite of opposition. Yeah. Paul and them—they keep preaching the word. Amen. Yes. They keep preaching the word. They keep going after it. Yeah. Uh, and I know we're going to keep going after it. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I tell you, if there's something stopping you, you've got to deal with it radically. Yeah. If there's something opposing you, you know, and when I talk about opposition, I'm talking about the things that oppose you. Right. Yeah. Now, we think it's the outside and this. I'm talking about what stops you. Yeah. Do you have outreach in your life in spite of opposition? Yeah, I had a D group with a brother today, or not today, but uh, this week. Um, a D time with him and I followed up with him on how his D group went well I already knew how his D group went because one of the members of his D group came to our staff meeting on Tuesday and this brother is usually fired up but he had a different light in his eye he came like this like he saw an angel (laughs) and he just I said bro how you doing 
I'm doing great, bro. <laughs> I go, why are your eyes so big like that? Goes, I'm just doing well, man. I, I just had a D group with Victor O'Ching. Now, if you know Victor O'Ching, Victor O'Ching has the best smile in the kingdom of God. Yes. Okay, if, 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 if the room had no lights in it, all we have to do is stand Victor right here, and the room would light up. Yeah. I mean, he just smiled just like this. Victor's going through bitters, smile like this. Victor's going through challenge, smile like this. When I'm edgy with Victor, Victor, you need to do this. Victor's okay, he smile like this. Yeah. He just never, he's always fired up. He's, he's cranking all the time. My wife goes, you need to be more like Victor. I go, okay, amen. <laughs> Take that punch. So, I, I just, and so, so you know Victor is this nice guy. Yeah. Humble. So, there was a thing going on in the, in, 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 the, in the group that was stopping the forceful advancement. And it was, this, it was a wicked sin. And it was one that you all could fall into. It's called the sin of the cell phone. That little idol called a cell phone. The cellular phone. Talk about that thing, man. It's called a smartphone and it's making us dumber by the week. That cell phone, man. Oh yeah. That thing, man. I mean, people get on there. There, there. I mean, you know, I used to. Th- I actually was fooled. I, I used to think people were really doing a lot, something really important on their cell phone. And then I started, you know, kind of yeah. cheating a little bit. I, you know how you shouldn't do. That? I started yeah. on the train, just kind of peek up. You're playing a video game. <laughs> You're not even doing anything. You almost made me not share my faith. I thought you were important. You're playing a video game. I'm gonna tell you about the Jesus here. <laughs> oh, I don't have any time. You're just playing a video game. What are you talking about? You don't have any time. You're playing a video game. Some of us. Yeah. That's our release. We just play video games. Mm-hmm. Well, this cell phone was killing the faith of this brother. And he got open about his sin, and again, and again, and again, and again. It remained stiff it didn't change. So Victor goes, so, so what would you do? And the brother gets open. Victor goes, give me your phone. Gives him his phone. Victor takes his phone, puts it on the ground. <laughs> Smashes the cell phone to pieces. Wow. Whoa. Don't do that again. Let's go preach the word. Ooh. The brother came to D group, fired up. <laughs> I, just had a, I just had a encounter with God. We know what the Bible says. If it's causing you to, yes. to sin, cut it off. If it's stopping you, cut it off. I don't have to go into it. We're going to get to chapter 14. But what makes so awesome? What makes it so awesome is that you know Victor is a nice guy. Yeah, yeah. But not so much that he allows his conviction to be superseded by sin. Yeah. Today I just want to ask you: Have you let anything stop you? Come on, babe. My challenge is to be unstoppable. Identify today what has been stopping you. You know, for me this week, the biggest thing that stopped me from really moving hard wasn't some hours, it was my prayer life. My prayer life. But I, I repented. Yesterday I went out, I got me a good hour and a half. Strong hour and a half. See, when you're really praying, an hour and a half is nothing. Because you know how you have to pray. You don't pray about all yourself. If you're just praying about yourself, you're not praying. You got to pray like Jesus said. Jesus says, Father, hallowed be your name. You got to pray about Jesus. Thy kingdom come. That right there, you'll be there for an hour. Because it says the kingdom come. You pray for the kingdom to come. So the kingdom is full of kings and queens. So so now I got to pray for Yuri. Yeah. Now I gotta pray for his mom. I gotta pray for his dad mm. to become disciples. I gotta pray for somebody to fall in love with him so he can get a girlfriend. Yeah. Okay. I gotta, pr- I gotta pray for now. I gotta pray for Frank. I gotta pray for Frank to stay in love with God long enough before he even thinks about a girlfriend right there. But I gotta pray for Frank right there, and I gotta get him going right there. Okay. And of course, I don't have to worry. I have to pray for my wife. That that's obvious. Pray for Michael Adrian right there that he falls in love with God more than he loves basketball or anything else. And, and so I gotta pray for Michael. Now I gotta pray for Mama Sue because that's my mom. Yes. Right? That's my mom. I got to pray for her. Now I got to pray for Teresa. I go, my sister Teresa, she's, she's, she's had some ups and downs. She's not been doing so awesome. So I got to pray for her. Amen. Right? I got to pray for her. I got to stay here. I got to pray for her. I got to ask God to move. Prayer opens doors. I believe this stuff. I got to pray for Martin. For Martin to be strong, to be a fighting Irishman. We don't have many Irish disciples in our movement. These are special people. I got to pray for them. I got to pray for Mo. 
Yeah. I gotta pray for. Her. I gotta pray for Virginia. Yeah. I gotta pray for Simon to come back to God. I gotta pray. Yes. I gotta pray for him. I gotta pray for Lashay that he doesn't get sucked into the world. Yeah. And that the world doesn't rebaptize him. I gotta pray for the kingdom to come. I gotta pray for my people. I gotta pray for Tulani. Yes. I gotta pray for Paul. I gotta pray for Caroline. I gotta pray for Owen. I gotta pray for people. I gotta pray. I gotta pray for. I gotta pray. It takes time to pray for people. Yes. Come on, man. Are you praying for people? Yeah. What's stopping you? Listen, guys. Let's fill this house next week. Yeah. Yeah. Let's fill this house. Yeah. I think as a church, we have one, maybe two baptisms today. Amen for that. We're fired up. Yeah. There's so many people out there that need what we have. Yeah. So many that need to hear a speech like this. Yeah. So many women that need to be at Women's Day. So many that just need to know that they are loved by God. Yeah. And that they have a family. And that with God, nothing is impossible. I love you. God bless you. Amen.